Well, good morning, Lake Michigan Christian Center. I'm so glad you could join us for Easter Sunday. It's Happy Resurrection Sunday, everybody. I've got a great message about the Easter effect this morning. But before we get to that, we've got an online meet and greet. Can you do me a favor? Reach out to your friends, family members, in-laws, outlaws, whomever. Invite them to, a, to the service. Send them a link, all right? Okay, I will see you on the other side. So if you were a Martian and you looked down on the first century Greco-Roman world and, and you, you would notice at least two things, especially if you look at uh, first century Palestine, you would notice the, the Roman Empire, right, in all of its glory, in all of its strength, its military, economic and political strength, dominating the entire Mediterranean world. And then you would look at this group of ragtag uh, uh, Judeans uh, called the Christians who, who followed this this great prophet, this great leader, this great teacher named Jesus. And its only its only notoriety was the fact that the, the this teacher uh, was crucified brutally by the Romans, and supposedly it was raised to life again. Ra you know, was, was was resurrected. So so if you were a Martian and if you were a Betty Martian. Which would you put your money on? In other words, if you thought, okay, which group would be still in existence and flourishing in 400 years? Okay, mo most likely you'd put your money you know, on the Roman Empire. And it, it's, it's interesting though, that if you fast forward to 312 AD, and on the eve of the great victory that, that Emperor Constantine won uh, at the Milvian Bridge, he supposedly, before he entered this battle, had a vision, saw a vision of a cross, and a voice spoke to him and said, by this, you will conquer. Okay, that's pretty remarkable. Um, and you would say, well, perhaps that's why he uh, made Christianity, you know, the, the, the legal religion in the Roman Empire. Or you might understand that Constantine was like any politician, he was a good politician. And by 312 AD, it is estimated, historians will tell us, that between 25 and 50 percent of the, you know, the Roman Empire were Christians. So it just made sense for the emperor to side with the Christians. Okay. What explains that? What explains this obscure sect in the far off regions of Palestine totally dominating the Roman Empire to where the, the emperor uh, made Christianity the legalized religion in the Roman Empire? There's only one explanation, and it's the Easter effect. Right? In other words, there was something that happened with the resurrection of Jesus that changed everything. In other words, Christianity was seen as a far nobler <laughs> and producing more nobler people and citizens than that of the brutal Roman Empire where, where life was just incredibly cheap and, and the sanctity of human life was elevated. In other words, it was not unusual in the Roman Empire where, where people would have, uh, you know, women would give birth to, to, to uh, little girls and they were not seen as desirable or favorable as a little boy. So they would basically just take them out in the woods and just abandon them. And it was the Christians that came out and began to rescue them and created some of the first orphanages in, 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 in the Greco-Roman world. And in other words, it started changing things. What explains that? The Easter effect. Something happened with the resurrection of Jesus that changed human hearts and lives for those that received it and it caused them to treat people differently. In fact, we know from history that the first hospitals, you know, for the average rank and file citizen were created by Christians. Normally, the hospitals were only created, you know, originally created for um, uh, soldiers who were wounded in battle. But the Christians began to value human life at both edges of human existence, and in particular, people that were sick, and they created these incredible hospitals, and they started caring for people. What explains the fact that these Christians were willing to die, were willing to be brutally persecuted and tortured for their faith rather than recant? Um, what, what explains that? Okay, The Easter effect. In other words, something happened within human hearts by the multiplied thousands and hundreds of thousands and even millions some 300 years after the, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, such that it literally brought the Roman Empire to its knees. 
and, and people began to embrace Christianity in droves, okay? What explains it? It's the Easter effect. And so this morning, church, as, as we're all watching this and gathering together in this online service, I want to talk about this Easter effect and how if we really understand the resurrection of Jesus and we really um, bring it to bear upon our lives, it should change everything. So I want you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 6. I'm just going to read the account of the resurrection provided by the Apostle Paul. He says this, he says, now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel that I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you believed in vain. For what I passed on to you is of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve. And then after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom who are still living, though some who have fallen asleep. But that's the Easter effect, all right? In other words, encapsulated with this, this little passage of Scripture in 1 Corinthians 15 is the gospel, is the gospel message, the good news that changed everything within this little bitty obscure area within the Roman Empire such that 300 years later Christianity basically overran the Roman Empire and then when the Roman Empire collapsed in you know the early 400s AD uh, what was left standing Christianity okay so it's really really powerful and what's really powerful for all of us is that that same resurrection power if received can change everything in our lives. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. So can we pray? Father God, I thank you for this time together at this beautiful beach background. Father God, I thank you for this incredible day. God, I pray that as we look into the Easter effect this morning, God, my prayer is that God, we would be changed and transformed in the same way as myriads of other people throughout history. And Lord God, I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the Easter effect. What is it? Okay, it's basically the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? The fact that the life, ministry, death, and resurrection changed everything. It fundamentally altered the human condition and it caused every person, every culture, and every nation on earth to account to it. That's the gospel. That's the good news. And the early church, the early Christians, they embraced that. They received Jesus as Lord and Savior. They made him Lord. In fact, that the common refrain that they said was, Jesus is Lord. And that began to change their hearts, their lives, and it changed everything around them. Okay? And see, the thing about Easter we've got to understand is it, it's the story of the raising of Jesus from the dead. He was crucified on a brutal Roman cross, and yet three days later, he rose from the dead. And see, because of that, because Christ is risen, despair is a sin. Let me say that again. Because Christ is risen, despair is a sin. And you know, there's a lot of bad stuff going on in our culture right now. There's all, you know, between the COVID crisis and all the racism going on in our country and all the political shenanigans and, and just, there's just all kinds of, of division in our country. And, and the, the temptation is for many people to despair, to just totally become engulfed in. But if you really understand the resurrection, there's hope, okay? So I'm gonna talk about the Easter effect today. And there's just three three aspects of what I want to talk about. Again, I'm limited in time. I could go on and on and on, but I'm going to be real brief here. But first of all, we've got to understand that the Easter effect is the salvaging of what was lost. You know, it's interesting. It says this in Luke, the 19th chapter, verse 10. It says, for the Son of Man, this is Jesus, came to seek and save that which was lost. Okay, how would you respond if you lost your keys, right? If you're like me, you lose stuff, and you're like, where are my keys? Can't find them, right? In other words, you would be frantic trying to find it, especially if you're late for work. Um, what about if you lost your cell phone? Okay, for some people, that's even a higher level of concern, right? I can't find my cell phone. I can't stay connected. Oh my gosh, I can't return a text message. I can't call somebody back. Well, what happens if you lost your kids? Right? Would that be a totally different scenario, right? Is that a whole nother level? And, and that captures the idea 
of Jesus coming to this earth is that God looks at humanity, looks at its rebellion towards him. A whole world full of people, right, that are lost, that are lost in their rebellion, that are lost in their sin. And the reason Jesus was said is to save those people. And of course the challenge is for many people, they don't even know they're lost. They don't even care that they're lost, right? But 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 and, and therein lies the rub. Therein lies the deception that this world has succumbed to because of rebelling towards God, is that they're lost and they don't even know it. And so, you know, the resurrection effect reaches into that. And God is seeking to salvage a world that is lost and doesn't even know it. You know, the Bible tells us this in, in the book of Romans, that for all have sinned and, and they've fallen short of the glory of God. And so we know from Scripture, if you go back to Genesis chapter 3, that humanity originally rebelled toward God. And so they fell. The Bible said they fell. Well, what was disrupted when they rebelled towards God and took of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Four aspects of relationships were fractured at the fall. Okay, number one, man's relationship with God was severed. Okay, and because that was severed, and because that was broken, internally, man's relationship with himself became broken and fractured. And so we tend to war within ourselves with all kinds of unsatisfied desires and appetites and inclinations that are never satisfied and we try to satiate them with myriad addictions Okay, going on in America. America is the land of the free and it's also the land of a thousand addictions, right? So that was said. Well, what else was broken at the fall? The third of all is that humanity's relationship with one another, man's relationship with, 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 with other people was broken, right? We find out soon after Adam and Eve sinned, the relationship between Adam and Eve was broken. And then the first murder in scripture happens in the very next chapter, chapter in Genesis chapter four. So in other words, we see something else was fractured. Humanity's ability to relate with one another. And I don't even have time to get into issues like racism, right? Humanity's oppression of one another, right? All of that got messed up when humanity rebelled against God. And finally, humanity's relationship with creation was fractured and broken when humanity sinned against God. And see, Jesus came to restore all of that, to bring to bring restoration to all of that. That, and in fact, it says this in the book of Revelation. It says that Jesus is making all things new. I you know there's a lot of people that they give pushback to God. And, and they give pushback to Christianity and say, if God really loved this world, why is this world such a mess? Why is there humanity, you know, why is there inhumanity towards humanity? Why is there all this cruelty and brokenness in the world? And the answer to that is, hello, he actually did something. 2,000 years ago, he came in the form of a human being and paid the penalty for man's rebellion towards God on a brutal Roman cross. That if you actually receive that, it opens the door to this, this cosmic salvage operation to begin to bring restoration between humanity and God, humanity and themselves, humanity and other people, and then of course, this created order. Okay, second of all, what's the Easter effect? Okay, it, it gives us access into a new life. The Bible says this, to as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the children of God that if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that something happens, your heart begins to change. He actually takes this stony, cold, rebellious heart and it becomes broken inside and it becomes soft and pliable. The Bible describes it as this, I will take this heart of stone and I'll give you a heart of flesh. And the Bible also says this in the book of Romans, the sixth chapter, verse four, it says, um, therefore we are buried, again, this is talking about those that have received Jesus. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That just as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we also should be raised to newness of life. So, what is the resurrection effect? What's the Easter effect? It's the ability to continually enjoy newness of life. Okay, let, let me just be candid with you. There's some days I wake up in the morning, I'm depressed. 
There's some days I wake up in the morning, especially on a Monday morning, and it's raining. If you know anything about me, I like to go running, and it's nasty outside. I don't want to go outside. In other words, they're th just like any other person that's ever lived on the earth, okay? I deal with stuff. I deal with, you know, how the weather changes and difficult circumstances hit and financial struggles hit and, and maybe health crises hit my family. And, and I deal with those things just like everyone else. But one of the things I know is that because Jesus lives inside of me and His power lives inside of me, there's constantly renewal going on in my life and in my heart. And it gives me strength to move forward. It gives me strength to push forward. In other words, I don't, I, I don't have to be beholden to so many of the things of this world for my happiness. My happiness is not dependent upon the happenings of this world, but there's an internal joy that I derive from my relationship with God, and it helps me to move forward in life. In other words, God designed us to have a relationship with Him. Like St. Augustine said in his classic book, The Confessions of St. Augustine, our God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts will forever be restless until they find their rest in you. And what is that rest? That rest is newness of life, the resurrection life of Jesus. And, and it can in other words, the, the best way I can describe it, in fact, if you can see this, these are weebles, and if you know anything about weebles, let me turn them around so you can actually see them, okay? If you know anything about weebles, weebles wobble, but they don't fall down, right? And, and a friend gave me these about 10 years ago because I would always talk about this. But, but this idea of the weeble, okay, is, is the idea that when you get knocked down, you bounce back up. And when you get knocked down, you get bounced back up, right? And, and that's this idea of the resurrection, is that there's a bounce back that people that don't know Jesus, that they fail to understand. And that, that, that you know, e even through life's greatest difficulties, there's always hope and there's always a bounce back. It, there's newness of life in Christ. And finally, as we're talking about the resurrection effect, okay, it's this idea that the sad becomes untrue. There's something that we know uh, from the scriptures and from knowing God that it doesn't matter how difficult things get, that God can turn situations around. If you've ever seen um, The Hobbit and um, you know the, uh, the Lord of the Rings, there's a classic line in that movie where, where one of the characters named Samwise is talking to one of the main characters named Gandalf. And he asks Gandalf a great question. He says, will everything sad finally become untrue? And, and that is a great expression of the resurrection power of Jesus, is that if you really know him, everything sad will become untrue. And, and it first begins by receiving him as Lord and Savior, and suddenly now our hearts begin to change, and, 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 and a lot of that anger and frustration and bitterness and, and, and the lack of, of, of um, satisfaction in life, okay, it begins to fade away and suddenly you're filled with fullness and abundance and joy and strength and, and encouragement and, and hope and all those kinds of things and suddenly the sad becomes untrue for your life. But then God begins to move far beyond that and begins to restore relationships that perhaps were broken in your life. And, and, and then again, ultimately, the, the resurrection is such that even when we do physically die, and we will physically die, the resurrection power of Jesus is still working because He begins to restore everything back to us that we once lost. Okay, in other words, the body you've always wanted, it's going to be restored back to you in the resurrection. And, and the health you always wanted is going to be restored back to you in the resurrection. And, and the friendships that have been broken in your life, they're going to be restored back to you in the resurrection. In other words, the resurrection is like this. There are, in, especially in the New Testament, but throughout the Bible, there's a lot of rewords. Okay, restoration, repent, redeem, reconciliation. Right? There's a resurrection. There's all of these rewords, and what do these rewords mean? It refers to something that is being returned back to its original intended state. That's what the resurrection brings. And, and that's what we understand as a Christian. That's the Easter effect. That, that, that is this, this idea that God is not giving up on this earth, 
and God has not given up on any person, and God has not given up on any relationship. He has breakthrough, but you've got to receive it. So as I close this morning, I want to just leave you with thinking through the Easter effect, all right? It, it restores, it, it, it's a great salvage operation that God has initiated 2,000 years ago. And it begins to restore everything, but you've got to receive it. You know, Jesus said in his ministry over and over again, repent and receive the kingdom of God. And if you're watching this video and perhaps you don't know Jesus and everything I'm talking about, the sad becoming untrue, can you receive that? Absolutely. Here's what you do. You ask Jesus in your heart. You ask him to forgive you of your sins. And the Bible says that you will be made new. You'll be made born again. But the cool thing about it is you're going to shift gears from your little story. And you're going to enter into his kingdom, into his larger story of restora re restoration in the earth. So God's going to bring a restoration in your heart. But it doesn't just stop there. God is going to use you to bring restoration at your work and within your family, and in your neighborhood, and every person that you come in contact with, you're gonna be a light, and you're gonna be a vehicle of that restoration. God's gonna allow you to be a part of a story that is far bigger than your own. So I encourage you, if you've never prayed that, and you're open to that, can you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I know I'm a sinner. I know I've been separated from you, but God, I receive you as my Lord, and I receive you as my Savior. And God, I from this day forward, I'm going to serve you, and I'm going to follow you. I leave my little story, and I enter into your larger story for my life. God, use me for your purposes, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, if you prayed that prayer, I tell you what the Bible says, you've transitioned from death to into life. The Bible says in the book of Colossians, you've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You're in right relationship with God and you're going to find out there's going to be a dynamic change that's happening in your life and you're going to be able to, you're going to see a lot of restoration happening in your life. A lot of things returned to you. Probably a big part of this, perhaps just mental peace and clarity that God begins to give you because you've transitioned and you've exchanged your life for his life and it's a powerful thing and so if you've done that I, I want to connect with you please reach out to me to Pastor Eric at Lake Michigan Christian Center church let me say it again it's Pastor Eric P-A-S-T-O-R E-R-I-K at L-M-C-C dot church I would love to hear from you please reach out to me all right, church, hey, it was great to be with you today. Happy Easter, right? Enjoy the Easter effect. Let the resurrection of Jesus continue just to just reverberate throughout your life. It's an awesome, awesome thing. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next week.